using the work function for a specific metal, there are a number of calculations that we can do. And so by way of an example, we have here the work function for zinc as 6.9 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Remember that work function means the minimum energy required to eject an electron from the surface of that metal. Now the first and most common question here would be to calculate the threshold frequency for that metal. So threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of a photon required to eject an electron and that is calculated using the formula work function is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by our threshold frequency where the work function was given to us as 6.9 times 10 to the negative 19. Planck's constant is always given as 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 and the threshold frequency is our unknown here that we can solve to find the threshold frequency for this metal is 1.04 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz meaning that is the minimum frequency that a photon must have in order to eject an electron from the surface of this metal. A similar question to this is instead of asking for the minimum frequency we can ask for the maximum wavelength. This is possible because frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other which means that where we have a minimum frequency that can eject a photoelectron we also would have a maximum wavelength that can eject a photoelectron and we can calculate that by saying that the speed of light in air is always a constant 3 times 10 to the 8 the frequency here is the frequency that is our minimum, our threshold frequency that we've already calculated, 1.04 times 10 to the power of 15. And then our maximum wavelength is therefore going to be 2.88 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. A common question that follows this would be something along the lines of calculate the kinetic energy if this metal is radiated with a wavelength of 200 nanometers. And the first thing that we need to see here is we asked for the kinetic energy. We have the work function, so we're going to be looking to use the formula E is equal to work function plus kinetic energy. Now what we need to do is we first need to be able to determine what the energy of this photon is. And we can do that in one of two ways. We can either say that our energy is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by speed of light over the wavelength, or we can do it in two separate steps where we first say we convert our wavelength into a frequency using C is equal to F lambda, and then we use the formula E is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. Either one of these would get the correct answer. I prefer to use this formula as it does it in a single step. So inserting the given values, Planck's constant once again is our constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Our speed of light, always a constant, 3 times 10 to the 8. And that is divided by the wavelength, which was given as 200 nanometers, where we know nanometers means 10 to the power of negative 9. And so we can then say that the energy of this photon is 9.945 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. Note that I have not rounded this to two decimal places because it is still within a question. We only round our final answer. Now that I have the energy of a photon, I can go back to the original formula, which says that the energy of a photon, 9.945, times 10 to the power of 19, negative 19, is equal to the work function of this metal, still 6.9 times 10 to the negative 19, plus our kinetic energy. Then with that we can solve to find that the kinetic energy of an ejected photoelectron here is 3.045, or what we can now round to 3.05 times 10 to the negative 19. Joules, and this is the energy of an ejected photoelectron. It is also sometimes referred to as the maximum kinetic energy. A common follow up question would be calculate the velocity of an ejected photoelectron, and we can do that using the formula kinetic energy is equal to one half 
multiplied by the mass multiplied by the velocity squared. And since we now have the kinetic energy, we have the mass of an electron, a given constant, we can solve to find the velocity of that ejected photoelectron. A common addition to this type of question would be, now what happens if the intensity of this light is increased? And we know that intensity refers to the number of photons, and so increasing the intensity is going to increase the number of photoelectrons that are ejected, whereas the question that asks what happens if we increase the frequency or decrease the wavelength, we know that that is going to have an effect on the energy, Increasing the frequency increases the energy, which is going to increase the amount of kinetic energy that these photoelectrons are ejected with.